Hello everyone, today I'm here to review with you a publication by Mr. Martin Armstrong. In case you do not know, Martin Armstrong is a former financial manager. He worked in finance during the 80s and 90s. Then around 2000 he went to jail for 11 years and today makes his living as a financial forecaster. He has its own blog, which is quite interesting. And also he's the host of the World Economic Conference, a series of well, meet and greets and virtual events that you can visit if you're willing to spend more than $1,500. He is quite an enigma. On one hand, he usually says a lot of interesting stuff, he certainly has some in-depth knowledge. On the other hand, he makes wild, preposterous claims that cannot be true as they are. So you can see that his trustworthiness overall is a bit in doubt. He also offers on his webpage several publications which you can acquire and since I was interested in the quality of those, I used some of my own money to buy one of these, China on the Rise. You can still acquire your own personal copy for about $95. And today I want to go over this book and see is it worth money or not. Let's start. Well. The beginning is a nice disclaimer, which goes deeply into the financial risk and exempts the author from all problems you may have if you follow the investment device in this publication. Promising, but uh, it kind of fails on this regard, as we will see later. Okay. Here we can see the content of it all, a preface, a power shift. China's move to the second largest economy in the world, and so on, and so on. And, okay, let's go on. Ah, uh, the preface. If you follow Mr. Armstrong's blog, you will know that he prescribes to a theory that can best be described as the cycle of monetary uh, and economic development. He believes that everything in life has a circle of motion and things rise, things fall, and there is a quite strong and predictable time frame for these things. And as he says here, he thinks that since the socialism in the West is going to die, Asia, in particular China, will be the next financial capital of the world. Okay. Now, Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us how this is going to happen. The power shift of 2032, because that's the date he believes the circle would have the next turning point. And what's annoying is there is, in this chapter, not really that much he hasn't already published on his blog. For example, he's very, very found, fond of Mr. Thomas Paine and his common sense quote. And as I said, if you follow him online, you already know all these things. He points out how there is a certain cycle for all empires, going from rise to corruption to fall, and what actually causes revolutions. And that's all quite interesting and makes a good read, but has nothing to do with China or why China will rise and become the next capital. Interesting is he also now goes into Byzantine coins and how they dropped in the gold value over time, but well, what does this actually have to do with China? Remember that is marketed as a high-end, super complicated publication for the expert, and there's not really that much about it. Well, he goes on, he now describes a bit of world history, how the 
financial capital shifted around to Spain and then to the Dutch and then to India and China and so on that uh, he's not really doing this to an academic standard. You, you can see there are absolutely no footnotes down here. Nothing at all. He doesn't say where the data comes from. He doesn't advise further reading or something. And it's basically just him talking out of his cuff. Again, he announced that's a favorite topic of him, the fact that India used to imitate Roman coins in the first century AD. That is a really interesting thing if you're into numismatics, but it's not really relevant for China today. So, at page 18 of 112, he finally starts with a bit of Chinese history. Unfortunately, it's the history of China under Mongol rule, which is a few centuries removed from us, but again, he enforces that it's actually corruption which destroys an empire, which in my opinion is a true statement, but it's not really worth to fill pages over pages with this topic. It's far too much. So. Now at page 23, we all, almost a quarter of the book in, he starts to go to China and how it will rise. But uh, nope, he just says it's already big because if you use at the purchasing power parity, it is today the biggest economy. Or maybe it became the biggest economy in 2017. Okay, fine, but... What about the problems that China has, like capital flight? Hmm. Nothing big, he basically brushes over it and says that the Bank of China can manage it all. What he says here is quite interesting. They uh, did not join the Western states in their quantitative easing process, but sticked to the old re-landing routine. And that's good because they can really control where the money is going. But he gives no data, he gives no deeper information. It's just really a well, filler at the end. Goes on. By the way, he does not really say how is this influential? Is that really the single thing that will make China rise? No, nope. no comment about that. Well, maybe it's the capital flow analysis. He claims that China is always behind and looks how the capital is flowing. And the, he claims that the other states wouldn't do that. Not true. If the other states would be ignorant of this fact, there would hardly be any yeah, attempts to curtail capital movements. There wouldn't be any prohibitions of for carrying money around borders and so on and again no footnotes very very few data not really what I expect to a publication of this price uh, yeah, level so. yeah, then he goes into the eurozone And well, he is good in filling the pages, but it's a very, well, you know, let's call it a verbal style. If you would have a fireside chat with someone, that's how someone would talk. It's not how someone would read a high-level publication. Here we have a nice personal anecdote. Then he goes into China's debt-to-GDP ratio. Another thing that I have to criticize, we know there are problems with China, but he glosses over them. For example, he says, oh, this debt rate is not really that bad, but he doesn't explain why it's not so bad. Yeah, then he goes also a bit into Bitcoin. Pages starting 46, all the way to here. 
um, he doesn't say, is that a good thing for China? Is it a bad thing for China? Actually, if you look at it, it's completely irrelevant for the rise of China, but <laughs> it's mentioned here. And so on here, we have a few pages about the property boom in China. He says it's not a bad thing, but why is it not a bad thing? Well, he's, for example, he speaks more about the beautiful palm trees in uh, the south of China than actually about the implications for the economy, but fine. And then he starts again ranting about the Western states. I agree the West is not in a good shape, but you have to make a point and you cannot just say they are bad. You have to say they are bad because. Um, then he has a nice little yeah, tidbit about the Puritans in America. And nothing will... To be fair, if you don't follow his blog, you may actually find some new data in there, but it's nothing new if you do. And then we have this nice chapter, which is quite interesting. As you may know or not know, Chairman Xi Jinping, China, removed the two terms uh, um, limitation on his position, and that was heavily criticized. For Mr. Armstrong, that's quite okay because it's not a power grab because the EU and the West is just as evil. So, yeah, it's not a problem that she does it because other people do it as well. Then we have Why China Isn't Communist, A Small History of China, which I have to say is Wikipedia level of in-depth, meaning actually... I hate Wikipedia, but you should go there if you want to learn more about China, because simply they have more information, even if it's doubtful. And then we hear on page 77, China is no longer interesting, and he explains his cyclical model. Again, it's also funny, he recycles the exact same graphic for the boat, and so on, and so on, and... That's basically the rest of the publication. So what can I say? If you want to have a nice read and settle down with a cup of coffee or tea, fine, you can do it. But for this purpose, I would not want to pay about a hundred bucks. And I really, I really encourage you all, go visit his blog, read what he has to say, because everything that's in here he has already mentioned there. You gain nothing new, save your money, use it for something else. I hope that this review will help you a bit. And stay safe. I wish you well. Goodbye.